Right, let's have a look around this then and get you familiar with this dashboard. Now, we turned all those overlays off in a previous video. We're going to, as we work around this main window, just bring them back on screen so you can see what they all are. We've also given you a handy little guide to download, print off, and keep near your computer so that whenever we talk about these different things, you're gonna know where to go and find them. And please, while you're watching through these videos, I'm hoping you're gonna have Ecamm at the side of you actually doing this, so feel free just to pause this video, have a go with it, and then let's carry on. Now, we're gonna start up at the top here and work our way around this screen and see what all of these different features are. Right at the top then, this is saying default scene and it's opening and closing this scenes window here. So if I've got it off, I can say show scenes window and this gives me access to these scenes. Now, as I mentioned before, you can move these around, position them wherever you like. And when we want to add a new scene that you're gonna see in one of the next videos, we just hit plus down here and it gives us a new scene that we can change and work around. So this is a good one to keep open. Now at the minute I've got this little red box down here talking about cameras and microphones. This is a virtual camera, virtual mic. I'm not gonna get into this one just yet, but um, don't be surprised that you haven't got that turned on yet. Now the next thing we see along the top is stream and record. Now if yours just says record, it's probably because you've got this turned off here. But what we're doing here is turning on and off three different options for how we're using this. So if you're going live to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, or, or multiples of these at the same time, then you tick on stream and then down the bottom here, it'll say new and we can say create a new broadcast, add a destination to this, and then we would either go live now or schedule it put a thumbnail in and all those things. So that's when we're actually streaming. Now, you might not want to stream. You might say, all I wanna do is record a video for YouTube or I wanna record a video for a course, record a podcast. So then we simply turn off stream and notice what happens at this bottom corner. That now changes and becomes record. So now I can just hit record and away this goes. In fact, when I click on this here, notice now that it tells me at the top, we are recording and this is live. I can hit finish, end recording, and you've just done your first recording as easily as that. Now, if I want to stream and record, then I would leave it like this. I really can't think of a time when I would wanna stream it and not have a recorded backup, so always keep that on virtual camera. This gives us an option if we wanted to take what we're doing here out to Zoom or a webinar platform, then the virtual camera is allowing us to, everything that's happening here in this Ecamm window, take that out to Zoom. Again, I'm not covering that at this early stage, but I just want you to see that it's there. And when I turn that off, that's what makes that disappear or appear at the side of me there. So I'm getting to keep all of these three on for now. I'm imagining that we're going to stream out for this first one. Then we come across the top here and these are original features that I, I rarely come into it this way actually, but the idea is at the top here, I can select the camera or for this default window here, or I can change to a screen share, and I can choose from here then what I want to share the screen of. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a minute a different way to do this, or I can come over here and I can select a video that I've been playing. Darren Lee, and I've just completed. And that will bring that in. So they're there. I honestly don't tend to work from here. When I'm building up my scenes, you'll see that we do this, and I tend to come to the menu across the top, and it says, what source do I want? and I would access it from up here. But we're gonna to get to that one. Now, mine says pro up here because that's the account that I've got and you're likely on your trial at the minute, so it's not gonna say that, but it will when you subscribe if you choose the pro plan. Then we come over to the side and this is where really all the work is going on. These are controlling all of those little tabs that you had appearing and disappearing. So right at the top, we've got our camera switcher. So this camera switcher uh, really came from folk like myself that want to have multiple cameras installed and be able to put a placeholder and say I want this one to be camera A and then afterwards I can choose what actually is feeding in and be called camera A. You're going to hear me talking about profiles and one of the things we can do with profiles is export this to another computer. It means that when I save it in here as camera A then I export it to my other computer or to somebody else's computer, they can allocate their own camera to camera A, and wherever we've said 
we want camera A to appear, that's where you're setting it down there in the switcher. Now, if you're only using one camera, then you don't need to worry too much about this one, but it is a fantastic feature, as I say, if you're looking at having multiple cameras. You can imagine like a, a, a church or a conference center that wanna have a big switcher in front of them and go, camera A, camera B. Uh, that's really what this is doing. Okay, the next one down, if you just hover over it, you'll see that it tells you there what it is, show and hide overlays. This one is super important. Everything we're building out, remember what I said, we're creating scenes and then everything that comes onto the scene is an overlay. And we've got options on here to show in all scenes, show in just the current scene or show in background. And then along the bottom, we can bring in an image as an overlay. We can have an animated overlay. We can do a screen share overlay. You'll like that one. We can do a text, a couple of options with text overlays, an object overlay, a countdown, a web widget, a camera overlay, and then actually putting things into folders if we want to. So you're gonna spend the majority of your time over there building out a new scene and then bringing on a whole load of overlays. Uh, as I say, we're gonna do this in the next video. So that one we'll be using a lot. The next one down, the third one down is our sound levels. I find this one super important. I want to know that when I've got this microphone plugged in, I can see there the, the volume that it's hitting at. I don't want it to be too quiet or too loud and I can adjust it over here if I need to. It's also a good visual cue. If there's nothing coming through on there, then I know that nobody can hear me on the live or in the recording. So I tend to keep this one pretty much front and center there. You'll see that there's movies down here as well. So when we bring an overlay in with a, a video playing, that'll be coming through there. So for example, if a video is playing and I want to mute my microphone, I can mute it and turn that one on. When we bring sound effects on, the system audio is just anything that the computer's hearing being played. Um, and then the interview, when we get into that as well, we can adjust their volume. So again, this is where everything to do with the sound is showing up. Then our next one down is camera effects. So we can adjust the camera that we've got here. We can do things like green screen. Oh show you a green screen scene actually in the next video. We can zoom in and out with this camera that we've got here and even adjust where that is being placed. We can do some fairly basic settings with brightness, with the color temperature, with the tint, saturation, um, and then gamma on here. But um, yeah, please handle with care. I'm going to hit reset on that. You can do things like mirroring this around if you want to, black and white, sepia, blurring it uh, or rotating it. So yeah, anything camera wise is happening in that overlay. And then we've got some sound effects over here. There are some built-in sound effects if you want, or if you wanted to play some music, again, I'm gonna bring some music in in the next video, and you'll see that that goes into sound effects. And notice that it's the same name over here. So when we play a sound effect, You can see that it appears over here and you can see that I've adjusted this down to 48. It's too loud when it's up at 100. We'll get into that. And then this next one down is comments and reactions. One of the things I absolutely love about Ecamm is when I'm going live, certainly if it's to multiple destinations, if I'm live streaming out to YouTube, to Facebook, those comments will come into this window here. I don't have to have Facebook or YouTube open when I'm going live. I just have Ecamm open and any comments will come into here. So that's a fantastic feature. I can bring those comments onto screen if I want to. I can favorite them. I can search in them. Again, really powerful. Then we come down to our interview tab here. So if you want to bring a guest on for a live, you can bring them straight into Ecamm now. They get a nice interface their end that they're looking at and they will appear down here in this interview tab. And again, we're going to create a scene in the next video for our guests to come in, for us to be sitting alongside them, all of these different things. You have a link down here. It says copy link that you can send out to your guest. They'll click that, that'll bring them in and they'll come directly into this little space. Again, you can see that within our sound levels, we can adjust the, the volume of them so that we're sitting alongside each other. And then the final one down here really is the preferences that you can bring up and you'll see that you've got a series of tabs along here with all of your preferences 
for everything that you want over there. These are your settings. So you can go through this and just tweak it as you want. Then at the bottom, this changes as you saw if we're on stream. I did just show this briefly a minute ago. We can add our destinations in. We can choose to just go live now or schedule it. It also tells me here that the required bandwidth speed and it gives me a tick because it's done a test internally and says, yeah, you've got enough internet to be able to do that. If you don't have sufficient bandwidth, it's going to tell you on there, no, you're not going to be able to do this. And it might be that you need to just upgrade your internet or something. So that will disappear if we were in record mode and then we would have this little record symbol instead. And then down at the bottom left here is a preview mode. Now, when I click on this, it will create a second window for me. This can actually be quite useful if you've got multiple monitors and you want to be able to put that somewhere else. Just remember to go back to live mode when you've done that then. The idea of this is that this small box is the actual live window that our viewers are watching and this preview one up here is one that we could be working on. So if I were putting some text on the window up here in preview, notice that it isn't coming through on this one down here that's live. So if I think it's very rare that you would be able to do this, maybe if there were more than one of you working, but um, if I wanted to suddenly bring somebody's name on like this and I could say publish and when I click that, that now brings it into the main live stream. But I'm going to come back to live mode so that now whatever I'm doing up here is being done in that live mode. So I'm going to turn this one off. That's unlikely that you're going to need that to get started with. But we've now walked all the way around the outside there. You can see that all our tabs are now back on the screen. The other place that I should just point out navigation wise is along the top here. You've got all of these options up here as well. So anything you can't find anywhere else, I'm sure you're going to find up at the top here. So that's as brief as I can do really, an overview to let you have a look at everything that's on here. It's entirely up to you how you want to lay this out on your screen. Uh, if you find that there's too much going on and you just want to minimize them, let's do that. Really in the next video, I want to have scenes and overlays open and I shall probably close everything else off. In fact, before we get into building some scenes and using those overlays, can I just in the next video quickly set up the profile and explain a couple of cool benefits to using profiles that even a lot of seasoned users don't even know about. So come on, let's head over there.